What is up, fanatics? It's 8 p.m. Mountain Time, and that means another episode of Home Theater Fanatics Live. Tonight, episode 166, and we've got a really good episode for you tonight. So joining us again, and I think this is the first time in about a year that you've been on the show, we've got Scott Sharkey from Kemp, one of my favorite brands ever. Welcome. Evening, gentlemen. Evening, everybody out there. How's everybody doing tonight? Man, wonderful, wonderful night tonight. And then co-hosting with me tonight, we have Mike from Audio Architects. Mike, welcome. Thanks for having me, Giles. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, and then everybody out in the audience, all the folks that have joined already, welcome. Um, we are going to talk about some fun stuff today, uh, some of my favorites. But I think first, Jack, uh, maybe you could introduce yourself for folks that don't know who you are, and then maybe take a couple minutes and talk a little bit about the company, Kef, because I'm sure there's one or two people out there that are like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to need to bring them over if they, if they exactly. don't know. Well, this is the chance. Let's get them. <laughs> so I uh, work basically in the marketing department with Kef, but I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm a technical engineer. So I'm an engineer by, by trade, and, and I am now uh, basically a full-time kid in a candy store because I get to do a lot of fun things like – do the training for internal and external. I, I write our blog. I, I come up with content creation and things like that. So I, I kind of just get to do a little bit of everything, but I'm always somewhat attached to the technical end of things. I've been either in the audio business or in the computer industry for a very long time. Hey, so, you sound kind of like me, except mine's just all been computer industry. Yeah, you know, I escaped I escaped the hardware end of things when, you know, maybe at this point now, 20 years ago or so, and and then went full-time into audio. But actually, I think the thing that was most interesting is, although while I was in the, I went to school and my whole life was about audio and analog, but I kind of got uh, sidetracked into, a very long sidetrack into the digital realm of things. But it was kind of funny because it's kind of come full circle. And, and now that background is really super useful because of, of how invested we are in streaming and, and, and just digital music in general and all. So it really, at the time, I wasn't really very thrilled with it. But at the end of the day, it's actually turned out to be, um, so like I said, super, super helpful. So Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So I'm based in in Nashville, uh, or of course our home office in New, is in New Jersey for Kef uh, America. And I was just actually up there over the weekend. We had a really awesome event at the Kef Music Lounge. We did a a jazz night, and we had a the fellow who is the director of research at the Louis Armstrong House Museum in Queens, New York, and he Ooh. actually just won a Grammy recently for his liner notes for the total full recording i think it's a seven disc set of the rca victor and columbia recordings of lewis armstrong from say 1946 to 1966 and so we did a little bit of a celebration there and of course you know with with COVID over the last couple of years we had this really wonderful space and you know we didn't really get a chance to use it and this was our first open to the public event and it, it was just a blast so i i was up in in new jersey for that and um we just just really had a great time. We talked about jazz. We had hors d'oeuvres. We listened to some stuff in the theater. So it was uh, it was it was quite quite a lot well, of fun. That, that, that sounds awesome. You know, I've got a I don't I don't know if I'd call him a buddy, but an acquaintance that lives here in Colorado, and he is a he's a CI guy, right? Does a lot of custom installation, and he was up there for a private. I don't know if it was an event or somehow he was at the at the lounge and he just could not say enough about it he was very impressed he loved it that's great to hear you know what we're doing is we're bringing dealers and, and installers and and people that we're associated with you know on yep. the on the retail end and the wholesale end in for private trainings we're doing mastery trainings in there and just kind of giving everybody a feel for um, how the theater operates and, and, and how it's been designed, right? It's a, it's a THX ultra certified theater, um, seats about 30 people. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing room. And of course we had the lounge with all the other, uh, products on display mm -hmm. and everything. So it turns into a nice little social space as well. You know, and it, it really is befitting what, what Kef is for those of you who aren't familiar with Kef. We've been, we're actually in our 60th year. Uh, we were founded in 1961 
in, in England. KEF stands for Kent Engineering and Foundry. Uh, the anecdote is Raymond Cook, when he founded the business, you know, he was he was over here thinking about speakers and he never really put a lot of effort into what he was actually going to call the company. And, and the story I'd heard is he went to the bank, as most small business owners have to do. And, you know, the banker asked him the legitimate question of what's the name of your company. And he was renting space from the Kent Engineering Foundry in Maidstone. And he said, Kent Engineering Foundry, Kef, and and the rest is history. So it's it's That's kind awesome. of... Yeah, it's just a great little story. It's just, it, it, and it just kind of goes to show how things were sort of for the pioneers of our industry, not just Cook, but all along. You know, it was a lot of people, you know, doing startups and bootstrap industries and things. And they had their eye on the prize over here. And it wasn't all about showbiz and marketing and stuff. So that's, it's kind of pure and fun at that end. So we've been doing that kind of innovation using new materials and, and new designs and things for about 60 years. And of course, we're now we're known for our blade, which is what I'm, I'm happy to talk about tonight. We've just mm -hmm. done a really cool thing with blade and with reference. Um, but we have the LS 50 and we have wireless speakers and we have entry level and super high end stuff. And really what we're about is engineering. We're, you know, I like to, when I talk to, to new people, I, I like to, speak about more that we're an engineering company or a technology company than just a loudspeaker company because of some of the design work that we do and stuff we're really full in on that and we have you know having our own engineers on staff full-time we don't contract anything out it's just it's our guys and and they kind of get to run run the show for us a little bit so it's very exciting from my end of it being in the business and being sort of a a, a geek hobbyist for as many years as I have been to be in a company that's actually driven by engineers who are really the ones who are deciding what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that's a little bit about Kef and, and what we do for those of y'all who don't uh, have any familiarity. So yeah, that's wonderful. And I think that's a great founding uh, for, foundation for everyone to kind of stand on. Now, let me, let me add this to the stream. So this is, uh, this is just your, your website, right? And uh, for folks that don't you know when we say calf everybody that knows calf they they can see it in their head right they they know what what it is and when they see a speaker e even if no one tells them what it is they can look at the drivers and they're like okay that's that's a calf speaker right yeah and the the primary thing that really sticks out is as you look at these and these are the ls 50s and let me just say the ls 50 wireless 2 is one of my favorite speakers of all time, especially when you made it with a subwoofer, right? Uh, yeah. To give it that that uh, low end foundation, and it, it just it just sounds so good. But the if you look at this, you know, you might think, oh, that's one speaker is full range, but actually that's two drivers, right? So you've got your tweeter in the middle, and then a mid range or a mid base around it, uh, and it you know the. I don't know, that little tweeter piece kind of stays still and then the the, the mid-base driver, uh, you know, vibrates around it. So that that is very uh, typical of a KEF design, right? And it allows everything to have just that near perfect time alignment. Um, and, and it's just such an ele elegant design and you almost never see this anywhere else. Well, right. And that's what we're known for. And that is... Everything that we do starts with Unicode. That's a, that's a great picture of it there. So right, I can describe it a little bit from, from that picture there. Everything we do starts with Unicode. We've been working on Unicode since the early 80s. We released our first one in the late 80s. Um, and what it is, is as you mentioned, it's, a, it, it's not a coaxial speaker in the sense that um, it's just it's two speakers sort of stuffed together, you know, a, a tweeter inside of a mid-range. It's it's basically two drivers, a tweeter and a mid-range, that are where the tweeter is actually in the acoustic center of the mid-range. Mm -hmm. So all three axes are aligned, which means that re regardless of where you're sitting, well, let me let me back up a little bit, just to listen to my voice here, right? When you hear me say certain uh, sounds like the S's and things. I would require a, a mid-range and a tweeter just to replicate my speaking voice, just to, to get it normal there. Nice, That's right. right. Yep. You, to be able to do that. Um, so you can imagine when it's an orchestra or it's, you know, it's a full ensemble or, or whatever, or movie, whatever you're listening to. So what happens, though, 
if you have a tweeter in one location and in the mid range in another, it's just like a train leave Chicago and a train leave St. Louis in a, you know, travel the same speed. One's going to get there at a different time. That's kind of what happens with sound. So even though they're leaving at the same time, they're coming from different spaces. So it gets to you and to your ears at slightly different times. It's not a huge difference, but it does kind of mess with our ability to perceive the sound. What UniQ does is because it actually comes from the exact same acoustic spot. It's a it's a, a coincident driver. Those sounds arrive at our ears, and we're able to to process them much cleaner. So I can be sitting in the center, and you guys could be sitting on the other side of me. You have that nice full 170 degree dispersion. It's on you know, with some products that we do. Um, and that's also up and down. So where you mm -hmm. put your center channel speaker is is also critical because, you know, sometimes you can't have it just exactly at ear level. Sometimes it has to be a little higher, a little lower. We, we have to live in our rooms, right? So we're looking at the dispersion on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis as well. And it's, it's just a nice full envelope that comes at us. So that's, that's the key to UniQ. And so, mind you, if you look at it very simply, you go, oh, sure, they stuck a tweeter in a mid-range. <laughs> mid it's easy, right? right? What? Right. We've been doing this for 35 years. You know, we've been perfecting this. And, you know, we're at the 12th generation now. And, and the, what we're going to talk about in a little a couple of minutes here with Blade and Reference, the UniQ has been redesigned in some cases from the ground up to sort of accommodate this new technology we have, which is the meta material. And it's, you know, 12th generation of that with meta material. And, you know, we're only releasing new generations every, every couple of years. There's a lot of, uh, actually it's even longer period of time than that. There's a lot of innovation and technology and background that goes into each of these. So it's, it's a big deal, you know, it's a big engineering deal. And, and when you look at what we've done now with, with Meta, to kind of move on a little bit with what we've just recently announced uh, in February with Blade Meta and Reference Meta. This is kind of going back to what we did with LS50. I think it was maybe a year or so ago when we released mm -hmm. LS50 Meta. And that's a whole nother thing in, in and of itself. So just real short, real brief, what Meta actually does is we know there's yeah, sound. Yeah, so I want to build the bricks for everyone so they kind of get the – kind of the the pathway right so sure. you know you you've got you've got the kef brand you've got the uniq uniq speaker right and then you have your different lines of speakers so you've got you know your your q series and your r series and uh, the the i want to before we get into the specifics of meta i want to take that next step because before meta you had reference and you had blades right True. so these these are the blades and what's interesting about these um, is that you have the UniQ in the front and then you have the two uh, base drivers on the side, but that still gives you that same apparent center point acoustically for that whole array of speakers. Is that, am I, am I kind of articulating correctly what the blades function is? Yeah. So we'll, we'll dive. The blade is a really, really cool thing. You know, first of all, if you, if you've seen a blade, it's a very striking design and it, it's not, like anything else you've ever seen. And this is a, a, a real case where form followed function because what we did with, with simula computer simulation and, and just designing is we said, what would be the perfect speaker cabinet and design for the UniQ to get an absolute, what we call a single apparent source, which I'll kind of talk about in a second. And so what actually happened is the shape of blade is a response to what would be the, the absolutely perfect configuration for a UniQ speaker. So what you have is you have the UniQ facing you. And then on the sides of the cabinets, you have you have four base drivers. So if you actually look at it, the mid-range, here we go, I'll wait for the picture to come up. Let's go up to just that one right there, right? So you can see the UniQ is in the center um, and you, the mid-range driver and the tweeter. And then along the side, you have these, these four really hefty, massive base drivers. Now, the thing about the base drivers, if you look at the picture here on the bo bottom, they're, they're in a configuration that we call force canceling, which we also use in our subwoofers. It's something that we've started doing um, 
1984 was when we introduced force canceling in some of our reference speakers. What that simply means is that the two base drivers are coupled to each other. So as they vibrate, those vibrations cancel each other out because one's going one way, one's going the other way, right? Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And yeah. then all those vibrations that would normally go to the cabinet are gone. You can take a, a nickel or a quarter or, you know, whatever you want to put on right on the end of that cabinet right there and play it as loud as you want. And it's not going to move. That cabinet is, is basically inert. And the, the beauty of it, that is, is you're not hearing the cabinet vibrations because anything that's vibrating is going to be interfering with sound. What you're hearing is actually what the drivers are doing. So, so there's that, that force canceling technology and the way that we've designed the cabinet to make it be completely inert is, is the first thing. The second thing is it's a, what we, it's a point source to single apparent source. So the, the total frequency spectrum is coming from a particular spot in space, a singular spot in space. So the sound stage is developed beautifully. If that violin is supposed to be up in the rear of the stage, up in the back three, you know, not just side to side, but front to back and top to bottom, that's where it's going to sit. Wherever the microphone heard it is where you're going to wind up hearing it. And the reason why you can get that clarity of sound stage is because of the lack of vibration. So the single apparent source is a big deal. The force canceling is a big deal. And we released this in 2011. And it's it's going gangbusters for us. It's a, it's a great, great flagship product for us. And then what we really have recently introduced was this meta material, which is something that we introduced with the LS50 meta a couple of years ago, which takes any of the back wave energy inside of the cabinet, right? Because we know when we have a speaker, the sound that we want to hear comes out the front, but there's a whole bunch of equal amount of sound that goes out the rear of the and bounces around inside of the box itself. And that's not so good because that is going to cause pressure and it's going to uh, press against the tweeter and all and be delayed. So then you're going to have, you know, old sound mixing with new sound and it messes with our ability to hear it. What this meta material disc does, which actually sits right on the back of the UniQ. Yeah, you can see it in this picture on the video. There you go. Yep, right, right over there. What that actually does is it, it you know, in, in as simple terms as possible, it acts like an acoustic black hole where that back wave sound will enter one of 30 different channels. And you can see the channels right in there. And each of those channels is tuned to a certain frequency range or octave or however you, you want to describe it. And so let's say a 660 hertz signal is coming back in the back wave. It'll get into that. It'll excite the channel for that particular frequency range and then never come back out again. So we've actually been able to eliminate 99% of all of that energy that we don't want from about 600 hertz on up, which is really the important um, frequencies. Base frequencies act a little bit differently. So, you know, we don't really, uh, it's kind of a different conversation to have. But we, and sure. again, it's attached to the UniQ. So it's those frequencies coming out of the UniQ. And it's astounding. I'll, you know, I'll tell you guys, right, I, I try not to just say things just to, to say things. But the first time I heard the LS50 meta was just astounding to me. There's one record that I've been using to set up when I was doing front of house stuff or working in studios that I've used the same. It's Donald Fagan, the night fly. It's, you know, from my age, you know, my time of, of doing um, audio things. And, and I know that record inside and out. And the first time I heard it on LS50 meta, it blew me away because I was aware that there were certain things going on in the mix. And then with meta, I actually, they were right there. I just heard them. So um, it's a super exciting technology, and we we partnered with a with a company to to do some of the design work that is a pioneer in the field of meta material acoustic damping, right? And basically, what a meta material is is it's any thing that in nature does one thing, and then we kind of manipulate it, it does something different. So if I were to tell you the meta material disc is actually plastic. You know, the last thing you're going to think of that plastic is a good sound insulator or a good, sure. you know, it just isn't. But in this, in this configuration or how we're using it, it's, it's really amazing. So that, that brings us up to where we are, you know, today with the products. So Mike, now, didn't we see the old version of the blades, I think in 
2019 at Cedia. I've seen I've seen think. them I've seen them recently. Uh, Magnolia, uh, there's like one Magnolia in the area that carries them. And Dude, uh, you, were those the were those the meta material version or was it an older I, set? I'm I don't know. Oh yeah, you, you know, and there are two I, versions I of Blades, right? I don't well, know. Right, there's as of January, and you talk about the Magnolia. We're we've they are now gonna if there's Blade on display, they're gonna be Blade, blade meta. Okay. Yeah, so right. so they must have been the meta then, because they were yeah. like a bright blue, beautiful, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous pair of. How long ago was this? Oh man, you know what? You guys don't you do the bright blue anymore, do you? Right. So if it was prior to February of this year, they were not meta. Okay, so it must not have been the meta because it was almost identical to what Giles and I saw in 2019 at Cedia. Yeah, so I mean, we do have some awesome custom colors and different different colors and available for Blade. You know, you could actually, if your favorite color is whatever color it is, you can you can go to uh, your auto body shop or a paint supplier and get the number code mm -hmm. for that particular paint and and order a absolute custom um, blade for yourself if you're of a liking to do that you know so if you wanted to, if you needed to match your ferrari or your lamborghini you know that exact color you can you can go right ahead and do that which i think is it, it actually is really awesome to be able to do that right on i'm just say i'm going to get a pair of blades to put in my garage mm -hmm. right yeah so so as i pull in my uh you know custom orange tesla plaid yeah, or your 74 brown Pinto, if you happen to be really, really, you know, partial to that brown Pinto color, go for it. You, There's you, no you, reason it's not exact to. match, right? Guys, yeah. <laughs> there, is a, there is a certain speaker I want to ask Jack about. Hold on. I want to share my screen real quick, Giles. Sure, yeah. Um, Bring it up. It's, don't worry. I'm not going to do anything crazy. Uh, window, Chrome tab. I know you okay. have to click like 87 times to get it. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay. This is what I want to share. I want okay. I, I want to review a pair of these. Oh, the, yeah. the, the 104 twos? Yeah. These these were, you know, you know why? Is because these were Patrick Bateman's speakers in, in the movie American Psycho. Yes. <laughs> these were the ones that he used. And um, hey, if they're good enough for him, they're good enough for me. So they're Actually, awesome. So, two fun things about the 1042. Um, they actually are force canceling. There's force canceling base drivers in those. And so, one is pointing up and one is pointing down. And there's a rod that connects the two of them that actually isolates them from the cabinet. Wow. So, when we talk about force canceling in Blade or in the KF92 subwoofer or wherever it happens to be, it's it really started with 1042. And the second thing is, is, is I have personal experience with, with users or consumers, customers that have had these since 1984 or 1985 and will spend thousands of dollars to refer them because, you know, the caps and the ferrofluid and, you know, the surrounds, it's, you know, you're looking on 40 years now, almost in some cases, right. they won't part with them. It's a, it's a really wonderful speaker. The, the thing that I will say is what this 1042 to me personally is the launching point to the things that we're doing now. We when we right. look at what we're doing now, we we kind of look back in a lot of ways to the 1042. So, if I have one laying around and you know I can get it out for your review, you know no promises there, but uh, you know so we can. I, I may have had a better time when I was uh, you know a year old, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, um, you little youngster, you! I was only so, seven in nineteen eighty. God, so uh, yeah, what what? Because these were the 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 flagship. These were like your yeah. blades of nineteen eighty eighty four. You know, like this yeah. was this was the main thing you guys were doing, and that just goes to show the heritage you guys have in in hi fi and in audio. You've been around for a very long time, and and obviously they're using your speakers in you know movies that yeah are iconic and and you know cult followings and all that um i really enjoyed that movie I, that's a guilty pleasure of mine i thought it was hilarious <laughs> but, I, just, uh, I, I wait to be able to pick the speakers out there there's there's a couple of different movies none of course are coming to mind right now where um you can you can you can see see our product in there and there's a really cool picture of of david gilmore 
um, circulating on Instagram that his wife took of him playing guitar with a pair of LSX in the background. So in oh, nice. completely, you know, just incidental. They just happen to be behind him because the picture mm -hmm. is not of the LSX, it's of David Gilmour playing guitar, but lo and behold, and that's always, it's always a treat, but it does speak to the, the fit and finish and, and how we do things. And, and again, like you mentioned, we've been, we've been doing it for, you know, for six decades, actually, we're in our seventh decade now. And, um, because we're engineering, you know, our core is in engineering, uh, it, it, some of these figures like the 1042, they reach iconic stage. And we're seeing that with even LS50 and Blade now. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, LS50 was not going to be a long-term product for us. It was to celebrate our 50th anniversary back in 2011, right? It was specifically designed for that. And you, in fact, if you're lucky enough, it even says 50th anniversary LS50 on the on the trim rings of the original I remember one. That, yeah. Yeah, right? But you know, it's it's a great product. So why would we just not continue to, to see how far it would go and here we are, you know, 11 years later and it's it's become another masterpiece for us and we're really really very proud of that. Yeah. So let's I, I talk a little bit about well, go ahead, Mike. And then no, go, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So what I was going to say is the, you know, the LS fifties are, are very uh, consumer market pointed, right? So they're mm -hmm. at a fairly good price point. Most people can get into them. The sound is awesome. The blades are complete enthusiast pieces, right? So you, yeah. you're going to spend some money on those, right? 20, 30 grand. Right. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're worth those pennies and then coming in somewhere in the middle, are I I think some speakers that might have a little more musculature than than the LS50 Metas, but you know they're 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 not blades. And let me let me throw this up here so we can see. And that's the the reference series, right? And these are also they they've been metified as well. Um, and I just I love the look of the white reference five. That I mean that man that that's a classy looking speaker right there. And when you see it. You know, when you're in the same room with it, it 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 holds that. It's it's it it really speaks to you. It, you know, of uh, the 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 class and the and the fit and the finish of it. Right? It's it's hand built like Blade is. There's you know one technician works on it all the way through from beginning to end. And the cool thing about reference and to give you a little background on reference, we've been putting reference together for a very very long time, and it's a result of all of this really wonderful data that we started collecting when we started using computers back in the early 70s. We were the first loudspeaker manufacturer to do design work and simulation work using computers. Hmm. So we had, we had massive amounts of data and literally the engineers looked at each other and said, what can we do with this data? And we realized that we could start measuring speakers, the cabinets, the, the finished product to each other and to the reference design speaker you know the the mm -hmm. one that we're, we're referencing all other products to 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 have it perform within a half db of that actual design perfect you know what what we decided was going to be the way we wanted to design it and and raymond cook is quoted as saying like he they they had to come up with a name that had some meaning to it and was still you know, kind of a sexy name, right? It's you still have to have it just mean something, and that's why they're called reference because they are literally to this day, each individual cabinet is referenced not only to you know its left partner or its right partner, but to the design master as well. And and so reference to us is that's why we capitalize it. It's always a big deal for us. It's it's what it means, and it, it, you can you can hear it. And it's you you have a left. And you have a right if it's R five or R three or whatever they're they're matched to each other, um, and it it really sets that up a step up in terms of its product. And of course, the fit and finish is is kind of amazing as well. And now those like Blade, uh, the reference line like Blade, all feature the the updated UniQ with the meta material uh, absorption disc in it and all. And it's it really is. Um, it's not a minor upgrade. You know, your ears will let you know that it is not a minor upgrade when you hear these things. It's it's really quite fabulous. I'll yeah, tell you, the I, black on copper looks fantastic. It, it does it. look good. And yeah. man, the, these CI 50, uh, 5160s, <laughs> these are ridiculous <laughs> yeah. for theater. Oh, my God. Now, are these the ones that you guys have in uh, 
in the uh, um, uh, the the New Jersey room. Yeah, yeah, in the KML in the lounge yeah. in the right. In the lounge, so yeah. right, it's THX Ultra certified, and it's sporting the fifty one sixties and a whole bunch of other goodies. Um, and it was funny after this event on Friday, part of the, the after the the material or the program about jazz and Louis Armstrong and stuff. We actually invited people in and just played clips from certain movies and everything to give you an idea of what we can do. And, and, you know, I've, I've heard these clips several times before, but every time I hear them, they still give me, give me shivers because of how well quickly they respond and how full the response is. Yeah. We're using the, the, the 5160 ref in, um, in the theater. It's, it's, and you've heard them, right? You've, I don't think I've ever heard these installed in a real room before. Okay. Okay. Not, not in a real setup theater. As soon as I get an extra 70 grand or 90 grand actually laying around, I'll, I'll pick up nine for my bed channels. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, for me, these are kind of, you know, one of the speakers that, you know, sets the bar of, you know, what do you want to do with, with a theater, right? You know, right. You, when you step into multi-channel, you know, what do you, how do you want to deal with your room? And for me, this is one of those pinnacle speakers that, yeah, I, I want to do end wall. I want to do this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and could you imagine how cool it would be to have a uh, THX certified theater in, in your house? You know, I, I guess you can I, because you've been in, in them before. It's pretty um, cool to have it in your office, you know, <laughs> so that's, that's cool yeah. enough, right? Yeah. You can only imagine. But yeah, and you know, and these things, they're, they're hand built. Same thing. We're going to, we're, we're going to reference each of these to, to the design standard, to the design reference. So they're going to, they have to operate within a half DB. Uh, the, the crossovers have been updated to, to kind of work even better with the new UniQ, with the updated UniQ with the meta material on it. Um, it's it's really quite extraordinary. It, it really, really is. So if you've got an opportunity to hear them, uh, by all means, jump in that opportunity. If you know you got an opportunity to hear reference or blade, even you know in your local shop or yep. at a store, and you, but grab some CDs, grab some stuff that you know that's your favorite that you're real familiar with, and, and just go and talk yourself into listening to these things because they're they're worth the effort for sure. Yeah. I know there are a couple of places that have, I think a reference maybe here in the Denver area. Um, and then I guess Mike, you know, there's a Magnolia with, with blades somewhere, but uh, yeah, I've got a, I'm, I'm looking for a spot that's got that, that built theater with those, uh, those CI versions in there. That's going to be crazy. I maybe, maybe it'll just be whenever I make it to New Jersey to see the the room up there which we did talk about very briefly when i've chatted with you all in december and and we have to you know it's it's just recently that we're open wide and actually it's really gratifying that we're as busy as we can be like the the, the theater is just booked and it's wonderful after these last couple of years you know we we actually the opening of the theater was i think two or three weeks before everything shut down so we, we right. spent oh man that's tough you know, two years building this thing and, and just, we were so amazed and so excited because very rarely do you, you have a vision for something and it comes out better than what your vision was, you know, and that's, that's yeah. kind of how we feel with the KML. And then it sat there for like literally almost two years. So, but one of the things that we definitely would love to do is have you guys come up and just do your your broadcast from from the theater i think oh yeah we there. could we could live stream from there we could do yeah. a tour video of the whole yeah, yeah. that's so i know we had that chat in december and it is it's it's floating there just a matter of getting everybody together at the same time and like i said you know as we as we move forward through the year 2022 it'll be um it'll be a lot more fun to sure to yeah th that. things are changing again for for the yeah. better so I, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that now mike you were going to say something a minute ago you still remember that thought Nope, it's gone. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess the one question about the reference then. So you know the the let me pull this back up. Uh, Just and, real quick, Giles, I wanted to answer. Yeah, Hi -Fi yeah go for it. Question, Hi-Fi Haven. I believe it was the one, uh, the Best Buy by Park Meadows that I saw the the blades in. So I would start there. Um, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that's where they're at. So cool. Man, so the the, the the five, the three, the one, the four, and the two are all meta. So those have been mm -hmm. upgraded. Will the CIs ever be meta? Can they be meta? 
uh, in that form factor? Is that something that's ever been discussed? Um, or, or maybe I'm, I'm asking about secret stuff that'll come in the future, but I'm curious if, if that meta material will make it over into kind of a purpose built custom installer piece. I'll answer the, the question this way is probably the, the best way that I can answer it is we're, um, we're all in on meta. On, we, the technology has, has done just some wonderful things that we're really, really pleased with. They've made our base products, the BSE, right. Our, our foundational products just that much better. So, you know, meta is where we're going and what we're doing, but there's no, there's, there's really no discussion or anything at this point um, beyond where we're at with, with blade and with reference and with LS 50. Right yeah. Yep. And then for everybody out there that, you know, wants to just see the, the rest of the series. So the, you know, kind of the, the gateway drug into uh Kef is the the Q series and these yeah. sound wonderful and Mike and I have both you know done reviews on mm -hmm. uh, you know 150 and 350 uh, uh, style stuff and then you know the the 950s and 750s are just gorgeous looking speakers um, you know we, the, we the have heard these we have yeah we have heard these yep yeah the, and they sound great uh, absolutely stupendous um, and you know these are the these are the speakers that you know when I go shopping, I'm all like, Oh, I can, I can buy that. Right. You know, you know, a pair of the Q950 is $1,100, right? Uh, yeah. 900 on the 750. And the sound is, you know, really great uh, for, for those dollars too. So they're, those dollars bring a lot of value. You uh, know, I, I feel like there's a lot of a ton, a ton of value there, you know, oh, yeah. uh, especially this, yeah. just with build quality and sound quality and, and everything you, you know, that's a very yeah, we're, amount of money. We're real please with, with Q and I, I love the descriptor that it's our gateway product, you know, and, and, and it is, and I think it's real important for folks to, to know that the UniQ again, everything with us starts with the UniQ, right. Mm -hmm. Is um, designed specifically for the Q series. So it's not like we, you know, we have, you know, just a UniQ that we pull off the shelf and we put in this cabinet, right. For each model of each product line, we have a specific or custom designed UniQ for that. So when you're buying a, a Q product, Q350, Q950, you're getting a, a mid-range and, and a high frequency driver that are designed specifically for that crossover, for that cabinet. You know, so it's not like you're we're not cutting corners on you. You're not getting like so oh, that's Q series. We just we have no, you're getting a a a purposely designed product for that. And it really, really shows in, in the performance of it. So I, I love to hear what you guys are saying about it because it means what we're doing is working and that's fabulous. I love the, the Q three fifty. I'm just absolutely that's a great speaker. I mean for anybody who wants a, a stand mount that it, you know, doesn't cost a lot of bucks, but really gets you into that next level of sound. It's a great way to go. Yeah. And, and so you got Q. And then what I think, what, what's really interesting to me is it, it's like each of the different lines builds upon itself. So you got the Q and that's the baseline. Then you've got the R's. And if you look at the R's and then you look at the reference, you can see the heritage there as, mm -hmm. you know, as the materials and the work craftsmanship mm -hmm. becomes more refined, but the styling in that base technology you know, carries across. So, you know, you know, once you buy your cues and maybe you got, you get a pair of one fifties and you're like, Oh man, those, those are great. Let's, uh, let's move on up to the R's. Right. Right. And you, you know, R series, uh, you know, you, you can move into the dedicated, uh, uh mid base driver with your mid range and a tweeter in the concentric concentric setup, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, but you still, you know, in, in this series, have call outs to media room and home theater by having the, the Atmos toppers and, and that kind of stuff available. Yeah. And there's um, actually an Atmos, Atmos topper for in the Q series as well. So if you're oh, going right, to, right. yeah, you're going to design Absolutely. yourself a home theater using Q, which, you know, is a super affordable option to do that. You, you're right there. You can do it easily. Yep. And then, you know, pricing for the R series is right in line, you know, three grand for a pair of towers in the, in the flagship uh, which is great. Now there, there's a pretty steep price jump when you go to reference over the R's. Um, and, and then, you know, but it's not that bad though, Giles. It's not yeah, that well, it's bad. three grand to seven grand, right? Something like that. Let me see. If oh, are you, are you talking to blades? I think you meant from Q to no, R. No, no, no. I mean the, I mean the, uh, yeah. Reference. So this three grand on the flagship towers there. And then you jump up to, I thought these were like 10 or something or 21 grand. 
yeah. the reference. Uh, so so there's there's a you know cool. seventeen eighteen thousand dollar <laughs> jump, but you know it's it's next level gear. Well, then you go to the then you go to the blades, and then and we'll just touch on this one. We don't need to get into it because um, you know I don't I don't know if people actually buy these or not. <laughs> but then you've got the muons. <laughs> this is a whole different kind of thing. Well. Right, so Muon came out rough, roughly around the time that I started with the company, right? So it's 14, 15 years ago. And they were going to build just, they had a set number that they were going to build. And the cool thing about Muon is you get an engineer actually comes out to your location. And he dresses and, all in white. <laughs> I can say from personal experience, that's not what happens because, oh. you know, I've, I've done several installs on the Muon in, in the States. And... It's it's just an amazing experience to 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 set these up and to see how people use them in their rooms and, and the equipment that they use them with and stuff. And it's you know, it's it's a it's an imposing, amazing product that absolutely makes an incredible statement. And I never fully realized just the demand, you know, again, it's not the same demand that you have at, at other product levels. But these are things that people really, really want to have, and and yeah. they're totally worth it. And it's a cool piece; it really is. It, well, it, it is absolutely a work of art, and I've seen Muon in person. I don't think I've ever heard it in person before, but I've seen them on display, mm -hmm. and they they're stunning. I mean, you know, this picture right here kind of just calls out to you know the what you can expect to see in your room. They're, this is just gorgeous, right? It, it it's literally artwork. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, it was designed by us and we, we worked with another designer, uh, an actual um, artistic designer named Ross Lovegrove for those in the, the mid 2000s. And it was, a, it was a way for us to say, hey, look, we've been around for a long time. We're here to stay. We're investing money in what we do. And this is what we're capable of. And of course, you know, the fun thing about that for the consumer is, if, if we're capable of doing these things, we'll just talk about Blade for a second. So much of the technology that we launched in Blade is now found in R series. It's found in LS. It's even yeah. found in Q series. So you want to you, you want to be the customer of a company that's putting this effort and this investment into things that are, you know, listen, I'm not going to buy Muon. I probably, you know, I'm not going to buy Blade. It's just, I don't have that. But I want to buy from a company that can do that because mm. all of that technology is going to trickle down into the products that I can buy. Right. And, and to me, hands down, people say, oh, well, who, why would you build a, a speaker like Muon? Why would you build a speaker like Blade? Yeah, you, you know, because it's going to benefit you, the, the consumer, at any of the other product lines throughout, through, you know, throughout the price range. And that's, to me, that speaks volumes more than anything else that we do. Well, oh, that, make, that makes sense. It's a major flex. It's a, yeah. it's a major flex. <laughs> They're all like, look what we can do. Well, I mean. Yeah. It, it, and there's it. nothing wrong with that. You know, there's no. nothing no, in the no, world no, wrong no. with saying, hey, look, look what we can do. So now we're going to take what we can do and we're going to put it into something that, that you can pick up and buy and then and then gateway into other products from there. And and to me, as a consumer and, and someone who just lives and breathes music, that's mm -hmm. a real comforting thing. Because I, I know that I'm getting something that is akin or is it commensurate, if you will, with with my passion for what I'm listening to. Yeah, you know what what I really like about Ross's uh, um, design philosophy is how he integrates curvatures into his design. I have a pair of uh, MU3s uh, mm -hmm. where that that he he had you know that he designed as well. And they just, it's funny because in the video I did, I compared them. I don't know if you guys have seen Flight of the Navigator, but I compared mm -hmm. them to that little spaceship, that that cool looking, you know, um, spaceship that the, that they had in that movie. And his de his designs are just kind of beyond our time, I think. I think yeah. they're, they're very futuristic, very, very forward thinking, very modern uh, aesthetic to it, don't you think? Yeah, and but at the same time that they're sort of this very futuristic thing, they're also timeless in a sense that, you know, a lot of times you have something that's very futuristic in, in 2014, and then by 2017, it's like, oh, well, that looks like real three years ago. Right. And that's not what we're seeing with, with these particular products. They, they're they futuristic in 20, 
07 and they're futuristic in 2022 and and that's a that's talent to be able to do that yeah absolutely well, what i like about kef too is that uh you know you guys have kind of made it hard for anybody to copy you because you're so the the aesthetic even of your drivers are so unique that if someone you know went out and said okay well let's do what kef's doing it would be completely obvious and ridiculous, you know. It's one of those yeah. things that you guys have kind of, and your Uniq technology is patented, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. There, sure. There are lots and lots of yeah. Patents. So yeah, yeah, within that speaker itself, and I, I I'm going to say it's a dozen patents. I don't don't go to the casino and bet that number that I just gave you, but it's it's along those lines. It's it's a tremendous amount of things because there's so many microsystems within the speaker, the motor drive and the surrounds and, and things like that. And and you know, we're we're doing things with asymmetric motors and, and magnets in the speakers that we don't really even talk about because mm -hmm for all but a very you know few number of people it's just who cares right it's mm -hmm. but it's stuff that comes out in the way that we listen and what we hear that's amazing and and you know for me the the nerd in me is like well we should talk about the motor drive more you know because it, there's patented things in there and so you, you add that all the way up and then you're able to finish that with a look that that actually is meaningful and actually mm -hmm. you know you're kind of proud to have in your living room that's a win-win now, for like the LS50 Metas that, uh, and the LS50, what's the ones that you brought over that one day, Giles? Uh, the LS50, uh, the powered ones? Yeah, the wire, the LS50 Wireless 2s. Right. Um, for that, I think that in its in its uh, category, it's one right there. The, cl the clarity and the mid range was was honestly unmatched. You know, I, I the mid range is always the winner for me. now. Ba base wise, it, it didn't blow me away, but that's why you pair it with a subwoofer, you know, and then you you get that. But I, a base aside, because a subwoofer can fix any kind of base problem. Um, mid range and clarity is something that you guys, I would say, have mastered. You know, in essence, and 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 I love to hear that, and it, it really that does hit the spot to kind of dress, you know, the basic, right? You're looking at a five and a quarter inch driver in a, in a mm -hmm. ported box, right? There are physical limitations. So right. the subwoofer yeah. works. Yeah. And these here, there's, there's certainly the one that you see behind me that I use in my office. They're not necessarily near field, but they're not necessarily, you know, long field either. And the base is fine. But mm -hmm. you know, if you're, it, even if you're not a base head, it, it, it does help. But to go to swing back, I think I might have gotten off target. I was talking about a particular set of music that I use for my ears for reference. There's a couple of albums that I, you know, we all have them, right? We're super yep. familiar with them. We know what to expect. And the first time I played this, these two particular records on on the Meta Passives when I first heard them, blew me away because I expected uh, my brain knew that there was something going on, right? And it mm -hmm. it kind of compensated and made it happen but here i'm actually hearing it sit in the sound field and in the mix right where i always expected it is and the beautiful thing is it had space around it because it lives in its own little space in the sound stage and that's because we got rid of all that extra noise that you don't want to mm. hear and that speaks to what you're talking about the mid-range and the in the high frequency clarity that we have and that that's the design it's the baffle on the front that's why it's curved to mm -hmm. give us a little help there with diffraction and then the meta material absorption in behind it there's a lot a lot of technology and investment that goes into so you can hear uh, a castanet you know in your mix somewhere in the background but that's what we're in this yeah but you know right that's what we're in this business for is to hear yeah. that stuff absolutely yeah, absolutely the fact is that uh they look good doing it too yeah, yeah. which is kind of awesome yeah. yeah yeah it's just a neat little and again timeless right that the speaker that you're you know the ls50 wireless 2 which is what you're seeing behind me on my shelf here right that is for all intents and purposes the same design that came out in 2011 for the 50th anniversary it hasn't changed because it works and it you know you, it doesn't look you know 10 years old it looks completely it looks you know, really relevant. really crisp and fresh yeah yeah okay so you know we're we're about 10 minutes out from the the hour uh and there's one thing that i want to talk about that i feel doesn't get talked about enough from kef um and i i don't think i've ever really heard anybody talk about this before and I'm going to put it on the screen now. And Mike, you just have to promise not to say anything because I like it. Um, they're, they're sound bars. 
Oh, I love sound bars, man. There, there are sound bars. About? And look at the look at this thing. This what? this is all passive, right? Yeah. Oh, Sharky, you're holding out on us. You guys uh, look at I love bars? I love this. <laughs> See, nobody talks about them. Wait, right? wait, wait. They're, they're not powered though. Exactly. That's the point. That's what's so awesome. Oh, that's crazy. That means you can you can use a whatever use a amplification small, you want. Like a small yeah. integrated. Wait, wait. How many? How many? Uh, this is one, three channel. That's a three. It's channel. three channel left center and right with a with its own bespoke designed UniQ and a passive radiator and a, and a base driver. We also um, just, if you want, when you buy one, you get a harness, a specially designed harness in there. So you could set this up as a singular center channel speaker if you wanted to. Oh, that's um, awesome. You know, so you have, you have the option to do left center, right in your soundbar, or just as a center channel speaker in and of itself fits, you know, designed to fit specifically underneath of the television. And, mm. Yeah, and it is an unsung hero. And this is another case. This is a product that is not new. We've had this product around for a while. What's the difference and between the 7003 and the 8003? It's the size of the drivers and the in okay. the array of the drivers. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's take a look at the 7003. I have this this is oh, one thing yeah, that yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. I've never seen these before anywhere. Um, but I just I I love this because there's so many use cases for this type of sound bar. Um, that you can use with a full blown uh, AVR if you want to, right? Mm -hmm. I think um, the eight thousand three would be incredible for yeah, a that's the, yeah, Can you that's imagine why, the the sound stage on that? Yeah. So you know what would be really cool is you take a you know take one of these and you put this in front you know under your television or above or wherever the the right spot is. Then you get a couple of Q series to fill out you know a five channel surround. Grab a subwoofer. And uh, I mean, you you get that. What I want to know is, I, I want to know what the sound is like coming off this compared to the Q and the R series, and, and maybe reference. I mean, obviously, you're going to get into some significant differences there. I think um, just due to the form factor and size of the drivers. But I would, yeah, I, I this this is just to me is super cool, and nobody talks about it. And I don't I, I don't even know how many videos are out there about it for for people talking about it on YouTube and that kind of stuff. They have to they have to be there but um it's just you you're right it's the unsung hero. And and part of it is because it is a product that's been kind of being a workhorse for us for for quite a while now. It 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 just kind of goes and does, right? And it's kind of got its own little life that it lead that it leads and um it's it's just kind of there for us and it's perfect. And you go back, you, you can even match this. We have the, the T2 subwoofer, which is a real small form sub that the ultra thin up in the top right there. Yeah. Right. You match that it's, you know, it's a powered sub, but it's, it's really small. It's a 10 inch driver, a uh, single driver. You can fit it in anywhere there with even the T series or with the sound bars and so I think the point that's important for, you know, because not everybody can have a, a specialized room in their house. Exactly. You know, everybody, you know, have a living room, but they might like to have movie night and have a full surround sound, you know, in their house without uh, the the scale and, and the expense, you know, to be honest with you, to, to do it the other way. This is a great, great option for people to do a 5.1 or 5.2 or even a seven channel system, you know, right in their living room. They just kind of cable it up, find a spot for them and you're good to go. What what is this thing? Okay, this is something that I've not really looked at before. So there's the ultra thin, thin sub. What what is what is that? The yeah, speaker on the stand. That's that's a T one hundred one. That's a it's a T series speaker. It's it's literally. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at the specs on this one. But here, here we go. Yeah, what's this a, I don't know anything about these. Yeah. It's the ultra thin. It's it's perfect for it, it give you a great example. The three hundred one right is what I use. It, it, it can either have the stand or not. It's like two and a half inches, maybe three inches deep, uh, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And and I'm actually using these in my theater. I have LS fifty for the left front and the center, and then I use Q one sixties and two pair in the ceiling for my Atmos. But in my rear, I'm in a basement. And so the sheetrock was put right up against the cement wall, right? So I didn't really have any room to put anything in there. So I put the T301s up in the, in the, as my rear surrounds on the wall, and they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with everything else in my system, 
just in a really slim package that you don't even know is there. Again, and this is also not a new product. This is something that's been around and just plugging away for us for a long time. But it's an awesome, awesome option if you live in an apartment or a small house. Uh, in my particular case, where you have sheetrock uh, right up against a cement wall with just you know some fairing strips, you don't have room to put anything in there. You throw that on the wall, and you're good to yeah. go. Man, I, I love this. Yeah, this is a you know this is a great alternative to sound bars, right? So you know, just like in the picture here with this television, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can you take one on each side and then slap one across the bottom, and you've got a nice uh, three channel front sound stage. So you, I, I, the reason I bring these items up is you know all everything else gets all the love all the time but for a huge number of consumers out there this is realistically the kind of stuff that they need and want right they they're like I need a sound bar because this is just how my furniture is and right. you know I don't I can't put big towers on and I can't mount anything on the wall or whatever it might be right I need a sound bar or it might be just like you said I can't put something in the wall I can't really put something on the ground so I need something to mount that's going to be shallow and you know these these things just don't get the uh, the attention I think that some of the more flashy speakers get but the use case here I think is much more broadly yeah. desirable you, you are so right. And I really appreciate you actually saying that because it is something that we, we you know, we, we get talking about all the other products and you forget these, these are kind of the workhorses of everything we do. And it's important for a consumer to understand that the same engineer who voiced the blade or the reference or worked, uh, you know, on, on a design of blade and reference worked on T series or the HTF, the 8,003 8, and the 7,003 or the T2 subwoofer. So it's not just something that we're like, oh, all right, well, we have to have this, this other product line for people, you know, so whatever, you know, our own engineers in house are voicing them and, and working on them, put them together. So you as a consumer, you know, you can kind of rest assured that you're getting the same technological input in, in your entry level speaker or your smaller scale speakers than you're getting on the high end speakers. And again, that's another really, really big deal. And it's, it's a benefit to kind of going in the full line because uh, the technology that we put up here, it's always going to wind up spreading itself out into all the other products like it did with the T series and, and with the right. HCFs. Yeah. Yeah. No, Jack, that, that's, that's Jack, great. You know, it's not fair. You know, it's not fair that only Lotus at the moment gets UDQ technology inside oh, in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, you know, we used to do car audio, K A R audio, right? right? Back in the nineties when it was, mm -hmm. was, was a hot. I, thing. I remember that. Oh. Yeah. That was yeah. The thing. yeah. Yeah. Well, that you was know what? my first introduction to, to Kef was in car audio. Hmm. Yeah. We, we could take some of those CI series speakers, take them apart and make our own car audio. I Could can't be involved in any discussion on DIY <laughs> stuff of current products. So you're going to have to just. Oh, I know. I know. I get it. We we got saws and we'll just figure that thing out. I'll, I'll oh tell you what Could you imagine that Frankenstein? Speaker? Yeah. I, <laughs> you're making the rest of this interview really difficult for me at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're not going to get into that. No, well, I'll tell you, Jack. Uh, I'll tell you those those T series. You guys nailed the the wife acceptance factor because I think that would be a, a an easier sell for for someone who is trying to design their living room or or, or listening mm -hmm. area for their home theater, and they don't want huge floor standards. Sure. And, or you know, I think that because um, that's I mean anybody that has a wife or a girlfriend or whatnot, they have to, there's compromise that has to be done. You know and not many girlfriends will allow their their husbands or boyfriends to put you know twenty four inch subwoofers behind the the you know right. the living room. You have to live in the space, you know, at Correct. the same time you're listening to it. You know, and, well, I think Jack, um, you hit it on the head there. It's really what's right for your space. You have to live there. Yeah, you know, and so if you listen, to, I listen to a lot of two channel music. You know, mm -hmm. to this day, and maybe I'm listening to four hours a week, which means all those other hours of the week, I'm doing other things in that in that room. You know, um, and and you exactly right now. I will say, you know, my I've I don't know if I've maybe worn her down or or not. Um, <laughs> she, my my wife has been around. We've been together for so long, and at at this point, 
she's actually hearing things that are amazing to me because I've, I've sort of forced that we're going to have some hi-fi in the house somewhere. We wound up having it in a specialized room down in the basement that we built. It's a theater and two channel and stuff. And with enough exposure now, I've actually been able to talk her into a pair of LS fifties in the living room and stuff. So, you know, you just got to keep plugging away and plugging away. And if it sounds really good, eventually uh, you can wear anybody down because it's a, it's a cool thing. It's a really cool thing to have. One, one thing I will say about the whole aesthetic discussion that you can have as you're planning your home. Um, and just in my personal experience with, you know, my wife and I, as we think about what we want to put in our, in our home, um, you know, it, it's kind of an interesting synergy, right? Because I, I kind of bring some of the techie side in and, you know, looking for that really high end quality sound. And then she brings more of a, an aesthetic, mm -hmm. a, a visual aesthetic in. So for us, we're always looking for uh, speakers and other pieces, right, to the mix that perform well, but also bring some level of artistry visually in, right. into the into the picture right so for us you know those pieces become very very important and uh, you know if it's not a nice looking piece of equipment then it might not find its way into our living room but you know if if we can find something that you know is at a good price point that sounds good that looks really good that's the kind of stuff right. that that really you know Right, because you know, in some cases, you're buying a very, very expensive piece of furniture for your living room, and it's a piece of furniture that does one job, and it that makes sound on the times when you're using it. So it's a tall order, you know. It's, yeah. it's to to find that mix of both things, yeah, and that's something that you know that. Raymond Cook, even you know, back in the '60s, sort of instilled that that's what we're going to do as a product manufacturer. So, and now I think we we really hit stride on on a, on a number of our products in, in that case. Actually, all of them really in that in that sense. No, oh, that's great. All right, so we we are past the hour, so I don't want to keep people too late, Jack. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. And I think this is a wonderful primer. So this went above and beyond, you know, kind of the planned discussion. Yeah. But which I, is I mean, why I love talking with you guys. Cause we go all kinds of different places and it's always a lot of fun. Right. And if there's, so if there's anybody out there that really wants to understand Kev in the product portfolio, you know, this, this is an hour for them to jump in and they can really find it. So everybody that's watching, you know, thanks to you as well. And if you have friends that are interested in Kef, point them this way because this is this is a way they can learn kind of soup to nuts where things started, where it's at now, and what that product portfolio breadth really looks like. Um, and then Mike, again, it's always wonderful to have you co-host with me. Uh, I love the point of view that you bring. Um, so you know, thanks again for that. And then one final thought for everyone: um, if you like Kef and you're interested in cool stuff. I would recommend that you show up for our May 24th show um, because it's going to be cool. And there Rumor be, has it that we're going to be talking about some cool stuff. Yep. There, there will be cool things discussed that nobody can talk about right now. Um, and I hate to dangle, oh, there's a secret, but there's a secret. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there into the universe. Uh, all right, guys. Again, uh, Mike, Jack, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. I, it's always a pleasure for me to come out and hang out with you guys for some time. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Mike, thank you. Take care. See you, everybody out there.